When it comes to making a mold for your piece, it's important to pick the right rubber to do the job. Meaning that if the piece is very undercut like this piece is here, you may want to choose a softer rubber to go with. We, have, we make, of our casting rubbers, we have over 11 different types of hardnesses to work from. On the Shore A scale, everywhere from zero all the way up to 90 on the Shore A scale. And then we have others that are even harder and softer. But selecting the right rubber, we make the soft and the hard. And we offer these pre-cast coupons for you to evaluate and actually get a touch feel. So please don't hesitate to call in and ask for some of these, these uh, cured samples to help you evaluate which rubber to use for your mold. Today we want to talk about actually making a mold using some of our TrueCast products. Specifically today we're going to use TrueCast 40, which is kind of an all-around good, thin liquid to work with. We're going to start by making a simple box mold, but there's a lot more to it. A lot about choosing the rubber and sizing the box and more things. So we're going to try to sort that out for you. Well, in this case, we've, the piece that we've chosen is actually a pre-molded skull piece. Okay, it's nice to work with. And so we're going to use that as our, what we call our master. The box itself that we're going to make, we're just going to make a square, what's called a block mold today. The mold itself is going to be constructed out of a styrene sheet, which styrene sheets, a 4 by 8 styrene sheet, 0.080 is great to work with. It runs around $15 for a 4 by 8 sheet. It's easy to cut, score it, pop it. We're going to glue it together with cyanoacrylate or super glue and a spray accelerator that's available for most hobby stores. It's important to choose the right rubber to do the job. For instance, this piece has a lot of undercuts, so we need the mold to be fairly flexible. Again, the TrueCast 40 is an excellent choice but you could use the 30 or the 20, depending on how far the undercuts are. For a lot of people that do concrete molding, it's important for them to choose, again, the right rubber. The 40, 30, and the 20 are some of the premier rubbers for that because they also have good alkaline resistance. In this case, we're gonna make a mold and pour more urethane back into it. So we're gonna use silicone release, and we're gonna also use the TrueCast 40. The different types of rubber to use. You can use silicone rubber, polyurethane rubber, our latex rubber, and it's important to find the right rubber to do the job with. In this case, it's going to be a block mold, so we're going to use the TrueCast 40. Okay, great. So I've got my styrene sheet here in front of me, and so now I'm going to plan the mold. When I do the mold, I'd like to have the mold to be at least a half inch larger than the piece is around it to give me room for rubber to make supporting walls. And the height should be at least a half inch thicker than the piece is on its thickest point. So we've planned our box out. So the piece is going to have, a box mold is going to have at least half inch clearance around the piece. So this will be our base piece. And then we plotted out our sides, which are going to be at least half inch taller than the piece is. And so we have our sides too. And this is on polystyrene sheet, or styrene sheet. And so we've just scored it with a blade. And so now it's ready to pop it out. And we're going to demonstrate how easy it is just to pop this out. And so there you have it. We have the sides, top and bottom, and the base of our mold to work with. Now it's time to assemble it with the cyanoacrylic in the accelerator. I've measured out my styrene sheet to make my mold box, and we're gonna assemble it now using uh, cyanoacrylic super glue and an accelerator that'll instantaneously set it, which is available at most hobby stores. Now you don't have to use styrene sheet, you can use melamine board. This is like at the local home improvement store where it has one slick plastic side and then kind of a particle board that are laminated together. 
Wood makes the worst molds ever because it's so porous that it absorbs the polymer. So melamine board, plastic sheet, something that screws together, those all make great mold boxes. In this case, we're just going to make a real simple styrene sheet mold and glue it together real fast. Well, we've made our mold box out of the styrene. It's all glued together and it's set. In a matter of minutes, we've got less than a dollar's worth of styrene here to make an inexpensive box. Well, we've done some things here. We've glued everything together and then we ran an extra little bead of the cyanoacrylic glue around the bottom just to make sure it's not gonna leak. And where my sides overlap, we did that. And if you notice, this is kind of a tall mold. And so in some molds, if you get it too tall, the plastic wants to bow out. So to prevent that, we put these small fins on the outside that are just small little trusses to keep everything from bowing in and bowing out. So it looks like we're ready to go. Oh yeah, one more thing. When you do the master, it's very important that you screw it or you glue it in place because it's going to move around. When you pour the heavy rubber in there, it'll get underneath the piece, it'll move it over to one side of the mold and destroy it. So I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to glue my master down. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue down and the great thing about the cyanoacrylic glue is that you can put glue on one surface and the accelerator on the other, and when they touch, they're instantly welded. I have an outline, so I know where I'm going to go with the piece, and so all I have to do now is just set it in place. So here we go. Okay, it's done. Everything is set. I'm ready to pour. But now we need to put a release agent on it because if you don't put a silicone spray release agent on this, it's going to bond to it. So I'm going to spray the whole area with silicone spray, not flood it. I need a nice even spray, but not so everything's kind of drippy wet. And then I'm allowed to dry for a few minutes to let the propellant come off of it. Once that's done, it's time to pour the piece. Now this, you can do some tricks here because sometimes if there's a lot of air gaps underneath the master, it's a sure bet that there's air that's going to want to percolate up and also uh, do some things to your mold that you're not going to like. So some things that I do sometimes is I'll pour a half inch of rubber and allow it to set for only 30 minutes, no longer, because I still want it to be sticky. Then once that's done, I finish the pour. That way I don't generate too much height, too much pressure of rubber to force air out from the existing from underneath the mold. Okay, well I've got it. And now it's time to figure out exactly how much rubber should I use to put into the mold. What you should know is there's, there's 231 cubic inches in a gallon of anything, okay? If that's the case, then we compute how many cubic inches in our mold by going by the height, and we go by the width and the depth of the mold. So there's three measurements, height, width, and depth are going to give us cubic inches. And two